As far as pay-to-win stories are concerned, this right here is just um, mwah, chef's kiss, uh, just poetry. I'm sure many of you are aware that Diablo Immortal is a pay-to-win infested garbage mobile Diablo experience that could have been good had the monetization and the game design that was based around the monetization not ruined the end game gameplay loop of this game that had all of the potential and had that potential squandered, which is why you'll see the meta score and the user score are among the lowest we've seen from Blizzard, and among the lowest on Metacritic, period, especially where user score is concerned. Same thing goes for the iOS version. And this is very much a pay-to-win game, without question, especially with this story surrounding a player-slash-YouTuber going by the name Jatisal Business, and right here, there's a video titled, Should I Refund $100,000 on Diablo Immortal, uploaded on July 30th, 2022. You can see right here, the likes to dislikes ratio is not favorable at all, with only 1.1 thousand upvotes versus 8.1 thousand downvotes. This is basically someone who is acting as a whale for Diablo Immortal, who's giving Blizzard a whole lot of money from just one player. And so comments will say things like, you guys are the reason Blizzard will continue to make games like this. Vote with your wallet. Now, this whale is in a special circumstance where they paid to win so hard that uh, they're unable to matchmake with other players and are stuck in limbo. Now, the video in question is like 11 minutes long. Kotaku here in an article titled, Diablo Mortal Player Says He Can't Get a Match After Spending $100,000, published a good summary of everything surrounding this individual circumstances. One YouTuber who reportedly spent over $100,000 on beefing up his barbarian character, the player's win rate for this individual is seemingly so good that the game won't even match him against other players, torpedoing his prospects of competing in the latest Rite of Exile endgame event. I believe it was stated in his video that his win-loss ratio was something like 300-something to 3. He's won the vast majority of matches in large part because he paid to win. He paid over $100,000 worth of power and progression to level up his character to maximum resonance, which allowed him to straight up decimate teams of eight, from what he said, just by himself. If Blizzard tells you this game isn't pay to win, know that it's absolute bullshit, and this right here is irrefutable proof. But you know what they say about being at the top, about being number one it gets a little lonely up there. Not only has he maxed out his character by paying to win, but his win-to-loss ratio is so good that no other player can match this individual's stats, and therefore the game just can't match him with any other player, which is why Diablo Immortal YouTuber uh, just his Saul business asked viewers if he should try to refund his $100,000 account as a result of the issue. He claimed that he spent so much money immediately following the game's release that he was able to easily overpower almost every opponent in the game's PvP Battlegrounds mode. As a result, he had hundreds of wins and only a few losses, pumping up his MMR, his matchmaking rank, so high it became impossible to queue with anyone else. And while eventually other players did catch up by paying Paying to win and achieving max resonance and maxing out their character and their gear and whatnot, because they don't have this guy's level of win to loss ratio, because he paid to win and became a whale much earlier than other players did, because his win to loss ratio is so skewed compared to other players who played alongside other players who are kind of leveling up at a similar rate, so they have a win loss ratio that is more reasonable. This is a player who is in a singular situation where they are sort of at the top of the pyramid and the game just can't find anybody else who can match his win-loss ratio alongside his uh, matchmaking rank. Now, this YouTuber did say in an interview with DM Diablo Immortal in this video that he did find one other player who was having a similar issue, but they were in the European server. So this isn't an isolated incident. Anyone who paid to win too early, too hard, and won too many matches because they were overpowered, because they literally pay to win, will find themselves in a situation where they just cannot matchmake with the rest of 
the Diablo Immortal populace. The Diablo Immortal YouTuber and player further detail that I would say it's probably around somewhere around 48 to 72 hours, somewhere in between that of only trying to queue for a battleground and never being able to get one. Now this individual did reach out to Blizzard about a month ago relaying the issue and wondering if there is a fix for this and Blizzard apparently did respond saying that in a couple weeks they're going to release an update to address this. But for now, his clan one times is competing in the Rite of Exile to defend its Immortals title against other players as part of Diablo Immortals' elaborate endgame. The only problem is that this individual can't join them because part of the questline requires participating in a standard Battlegrounds PvP match, which he is completely locked out of because he is at the top of Mount Everest and no one else has gotten to the top yet except in Mount Everest Europe. Because of his matchmaking limbo, he was unable to qualify and then right here we have a direct quote from him so basically I'm stuck as the clan leader in the Immortals clan not being able to queue us up for Ride of Exile at all I can't do anything about it this is the most literal definition of pay to win this guy literally won at the game he is untouchable but that also means he can't play with others because he is untouchable. But he didn't get to the top of Mount Everest by climbing it and by taking the time and effort to actually do the activity required to reach the top. He just paid $100,000 for a chopper ride that got him to the top and uh, now he's just kind of lonely up there looking down, seeing others trying to climb up to where he is, but they're not gonna get to where he is because his win to loss ratio is so unreasonable because he paid to win in the early goings, and for the, those who are just doing free to play and uh, trying not to spend money, that's gonna be a long climb to the top of this Mount Everest. See, that's the thing about pay to win games. On one hand, you'll have to grind insufferably for much longer time than you have available if you have a life. On the other hand, you can spend an exorbitant amount of money to get a shortcut to the top, but you'll have essentially skipped the entire experience. You've skipped the game, you've paid to win, you've bought yourself an expensive ticket to the top of the mountain. And in the case of Diablo Immortal, this was such a pay to win game that you can literally win into solitude. And another way this whole situation is harming this uh, Diablo Immortal player is that he is a content creator whose Twitch channel and streaming revolves around playing Diablo Immortal but that's been stifled by the fact that he's stuck in matchmaking limbo. He's trying to make money off of Diablo Immortal as a streamer and content maker, an effort now seemingly stimmied by his early spending spree. And for a lot of players, this makes the argument against pay-to-win games. For many other players in the community, this was a chef's kiss moment for everything they hate about the game's monetization. It highlights everything wrong with a pay-to-win system. The fact that whales who can somehow afford to spend that amount of money into a game can straight up decimate everyone else, can straight up activate a cheat code to progress way faster than anyone else would by spending that level of exorbitant money. But at the same time, it also highlights that it just ruins the gameplay experience itself. There's no balance, no middle ground where you're making well-paced, fun progression with a gameplay and progression rewards loop that feels satisfying to go through rather than too much of a grind or just not fulfilling at all and way too expensive. Going to his YouTube video, you can see plenty of people highlighting the folly of pay to win and the folly of whales who kind of enable this kind of stuff. Way to go, congratulations, you just made Blizzard see pay to win and microtransactions as viable mechanics, features, and games. I'm sure they'll not just continue with shady practices, but double down on future games. Tremendous victory you pulled in worsening the issues plaguing the video game industry. You absolutely rock. This is absolutely deserved. If you're stupid enough to spend thousands on a game purposely designed to suck money out of people, then anything like this is absolutely deserved. Maybe it's a lesson for the future basically people saying this is what you get this feels like there's a bit of karma at play you know you deserve this for making the games industry worse or enabling companies who make the games industry worse by rewarding them for their practices and in this video right here where he's interviewed by dm diablo immortal he is asked about why he does this and he's just straight up says well this is a kind of game that i enjoy i enjoy mobile games and the high of paying to win and all these things and look i'm not one to tell anyone how to spend their money you know it's a free country and all that but it is incredibly selfish to say, I enjoy something, therefore I'm going to ruin it for everyone else. 
I'm going to enable the company's shady practices because I enjoy partaking in their shady practices and I can't afford to do so. But what that does is screw everyone else, the vast majority of people who cannot afford or who would not pay $100,000 to max out one character who don't want to see this kind of pay-to-win monetization system and these kinds of pay-to-win games become more and more normalized and become something that more and more companies continuously chase after. You can spend your money however you want, but understand where that money is going and what the consequences are of handing a company like Blizzard $100,000 rewarding them for shipping a game like Diablo Immortal and with enough players, a minority of players, a minority of whales shelling out that kind of money. That's why we're getting figures like the $100 million that this game made in two months. That's a minority of Diablo Immortal players who contributed to that amount. The rest are just trying to have a good time with the game by not paying exorbitant fees, which the game forces you to do if you want to progress at a reasonable pace. This game is made for those minority of whales rather than the majority of just people who want to enjoy a video game, not a monetization machine. Other comments throw snarky remarks out there like, all I can say is congratulations, you're the first player in history to complete a freemium game. And the only way to do so is by shelling out hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yay, go figure. You pay to win, you won. Now you're on a throne with no one else beside you. Good job. I hope you're happy with yourself in the lonely top of this insurmountable Mount Everest that can only be surmounted by spending money on a chopper that'll take you to the top. Congratulations, you just won in a pay-to-win game. Can't complain about that. You got what you paid for. Others make the argument that the game is working exactly as it should be working and that it's a good thing that the MMR is preventing this player from matching up with others because this one player is so freaking powerful, he paid to win so hard that if he were to engage in a PvP match against other players, he would just, I mean, steamroll over them. It'd be way too unbalanced because he has paid to win something that isn't affordable for 99.9% .9 of Diablo Immortal players. This common aptly continues with, if there had been any other person impulsive enough to blow $100,000 on digital armor, it would match you up with that person. But as you have said yourself, you were the only person in the world inclined to do so. You paid your way to the top and now you're whining that you have nobody to play with. Why do you even find Battlegrounds fun when you're simply winning because you paid more money rather than because you actually put the effort in because you earned that victory by actually putting in the effort to get to where you are and by actually using skill to fight against opponents who are at your level instead of steamrolling over people who are not rich enough to spend that amount of money on fake progression, on fictional progression. I guess Blizzard is working on a fix that will make it so that the win-loss ratio won't be such a huge factor in determining who this player can match make with, and make it so that it's more about the gear level and the resonance level and all these things. But uh, plenty of people are just pointing and laughing and saying, hey, I, I don't feel any sympathy or empathy for you when you're ultimately rewarding Blizzard for their predatory monetization systems, for their insidious way of exploiting their player base. On Reddit, you'll find plenty of people pointing and laughing as well. It's pay to win. He won, says the uh, top comment. Just make another account, throw another $100,000 and PVP yourself. Here's a pair of comments that put pay to win into perspective. So he spends $100,000 to be the top dog in PVP and is mad nobody else has spent as much and can't keep up and he has nobody to play against. Is that the gist of this situation? The entire premise of pay to win. He literally already won the game. That screen was his final cutscene after the big boss, which was spending money. So congratulations, you can move on to another game. Congratulations! 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 <laughs> At least until some update increases the progression caps that you have to spend another, I don't know, $100,000 to get to another layer of max gear and max resonance and whatever. This is the messed up situation of Diablo Mortal. This is the story that really spotlights what Blizzard has done here, what they are purposely and intentionally 
enabling and are being complacent too. To give you a little mathematical context, it only takes 1,000 whales spending $100,000 to reach that $100 million figure. You really don't need that many whales to rake in a boatload of money from a pay to win video game. It truly is a minority of big spenders who make up the majority of profits and revenue for a pay to win mobile monetized game like this and it's for those people these kinds of games are made for. The best thing I can say about this situation and this player is hey, you have provided a fantastic demonstration on everything wrong with pay to win, how it ruins game design, not only for those who have to grind, but also for those who actually pay to win to skip the game and you've highlighted exactly why this kind of crap needs to be regulated and with an industry that refuses to regulate itself government intervention at this point is long overdue it seems like it's the only way to prevent crap like this from being put out there and that ladies and gentlemen is one man's take on this latest diablo immortal pay to win incident let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on all of this and to be further updated on all things gaming news reviews and discussions stay tuned right here on young yeah i'll see you guys next time young out